So for double crochet, when you're going to work into the chain, it'll depend on the pattern. Um, so always read your pattern for instructions. You may work back into the third chain from the hook or the fourth chain from the hook. So always be sure that you're looking at what your pattern instructions are. I'm going to work into the third chain from the hook. So I'm going to go back one, two, three. And for double crochet, you actually yarn over first. I'm going to yarn over my hook. Then I'm going to go into my chain stitch, yarn over and bring up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook and we're going to take two actions to finish this stitch. We're going to yarn over and pull through just two of those loops. Now we've got two left. We're going to yarn over again and pull through those final two. Let's do that again. We yarn over to start. We go into the next chain stitch. Yarn over and bring up a loop. There's our three loops. Yarn over and pull through just two of them. That leaves you with two. Yarn over and pull through two more. You're going to continue that way across your chain. Yarn over and through two. Yarn over and through two for every stitch. Now, what happens if I put my work down and I pick it back up and I don't know which chain I was in? Get comfortable with taking your stitches out. Take your hook out of the work and pull that stitch out because then you will see that that stitch was in this chain. So you can make that stitch again. and then move on to the next chain. And you're just going to double crochet across the length of your chain. Why yes happy, double crochet stitches worked into a chain also want to curl. That is the nature of crochet the physics of a crochet stitch, the back of a crochet stitch has like a curved surface area and the front of a crochet stitch has a flat surface area and so the back side takes up more space and it wants to curl. So it's going to do that. It's going to do this curly thing. When you work the next row that'll help to straighten that out a little bit. So. How do we work the next row of double crochet? You're going to, again, reference your pattern because your pattern will tell you exactly, but you will either chain two or you will chain three before you start the next row. Why? Because crochet stitches are worked from the top down. So you have to get your hook up to where the top of your crochet stitch is going to be. So I'm going to crochet, I'm sorry, I'm going to chain two. Then I'm going to turn my work over and then I'm going to work into that very first stitch there. So this is the same as with single crochet. You're going to place your stitch in the same place. The top of your stitch is going to look exactly the same. Right there. Yarn over and bring up a loop. And we're completing the stitch the same way we did when we worked into a chain. Yarn over first into that stitch so it's underneath those two strands at the top that look like a chain. Yarn over and bring up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And you just work your double crochet stitches all the way across. Yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and bring up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now, double crochet stitches are longer and leggier than single crochet stitches and there are bigger spaces between them. And that can, um, that can trip you up a little bit sometimes. Let me finish this row of double crochet stitches and show you what I mean. All right, what I mean by all those spaces. So you can see, let me just get my hook out of there for a second. 
you can see these spaces between the stitches. Those are really easy to find. A lot of new crocheters make the mistake of thinking that that's where they need to put their stitch. And it's not wrong. There's really no wrong way. Um, but it's likely not what's intended in your pattern. And so a lot of new time crocheters go into that space instead of into the top of the stitch, not knowing <clears throat> that that's not what's intended in their pattern and then wondering why their finished work doesn't look like what's pictured with the pattern. So there's five stitches that I've worked into those spaces in between. Let me work a couple of stitches into the tops of the stitches and then we can see them side by side and how those stitches sit in the fabric that you're creating look very different when you work them into the spaces between stitches and into the tops of the stitches, which is usually where uh, a pattern writer means for you to place your stitches. Now there are patterns that will indicate that you should work into the space between stitches. So make sure that you are referencing your pattern whenever you're working. So here you can see this first bunch of stitches I worked down into the spaces between. And then this set of stitches I worked into the tops of the stitches. See how the bottoms of these stitches are very long. And it really opens up those spaces between. And now if I flip it over and you look on the wrong side, it's a little less noticeable. These stitches don't look quite as long, but if you were to repeat this row after row after row, it really becomes, it really becomes apparent and these spaces really open up. So now when you are trying to count your rows, and here I have a couple of little swatches, and again, your swatches wanna curl, even when you flip it over, it's going to curl the other way. Not quite as much as with single crochet, but crochet always wants to curl. Here's our swatch that I've done in two different colors so that you can see what the front of a double crochet stitch looks like, looks like and what the back of a double crochet stitch looks like. And it's a little bit harder to distinguish because there's so much more yarn worked into the stitch, but for me, just like with single crochet stitches, I always look for that little ribbon of yarn that looks like a running stitch running across the width of my work. And that is always at the top of a wrong side row. Can you see that at the top of both of these rows worked in the white yarn? So that's how I know that this is a wrong side row and these are the right side rows because they don't have that. The right side rows have like a little blip of yarn that heads up at like a 45 degree angle. That's from this top of the stitch. When the next row gets worked into it, there's just that little bit left up here. And so when you're looking at a solid color swatch, which I'm gonna make sure I'm holding the right side up for you. Ah, how do you know what the right what the top and the bottom is. If you look, see how this looks like a chain? That's the top of a row of stitches. Am I sure? Yes, because if I look at the bottom, I don't see what looks like a chain. Let me check this side just to make sure. Nope, no chain there. There's the chain. That's how I know that's the top. And so then if I look at the body of the work and I look for, there's that row of what looks like stitches headed in this direction. So that's the top of a wrong side row. So I know that's a wrong side row, a right side row, a wrong side row, because there's that running stitch, right side, wrong side. That's double crochet.